Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy and welcome to part 66 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use external instruments with Logic, like hardware synthesizers, hardware samplers, and hardware sample-based instruments. To do this, we're gonna use a special utility plugin in Logic called the External Instrument Plugin. Now, I know this is a more advanced sort of niche MIDI thing, which is why I saved it for the end of the MIDI portion of this series. But for sake of completion and showing off the external instrument plugin, I'm gonna demonstrate how to do this anyway. So if you only use software instruments, you'll probably never use this, but if you have some hardware synths lying around or you just prefer the workflow of hardware or if you're just looking to incorporate hardware synths into your workflow, this can be pretty useful. For this video, I'm going to be using my Yamaha Motif Rack XS, which is a rack mount sample-based instrument. And as of the making of this video, 2023, this is a 15 year old unit, but it does have over a thousand presets in it, ranging from pianos and keyboards to orchestral sounds, drums, and synthesizer sounds as well. But you can use virtually any hardware instrument as long as it supports MIDI input and it also has an audio output. However, if you have an analog synth that doesn't support MIDI, you won't be able to do what I demonstrate in this video. But I have seen analog synths in recent years that support MIDI, so it's not completely unheard of. I also wanna mention that this is not a tutorial for the motif. This is not a sound design tutorial. This is not a synthesis tutorial. This is just a proof of concept demonstrating the setup and routing. The patch I'm gonna use on the motif is actually a really simple, just ambient piano type patch. So it's nothing special. Before I show you how to set this up in Logic, we need to talk about the signal flow. Now, one way to use hardware instruments is just to connect a MIDI controller or use the built-in keyboard if the instrument has one and play things into Logic live as audio. So the signal flow for this would look like this. It's pretty simple and linear. The MIDI controller goes to the instrument. The instrument audio output goes to the line inputs on your audio interface, and it's recorded into Logic just like any other audio recording. The downside of doing things this way is that you're not recording the MIDI data into Logic. So you can't quantize the MIDI, you can't edit your MIDI performance, you can't adjust the velocity after making your recordings, you can't use MIDI effects plugins, and the list goes on and on. So using the method I demonstrate in this video allows you to use your hardware instruments just like software instruments, albeit the routing and setup is a bit more complicated. So what all do you need to make this work? Well, you need a synthesizer or a hardware instrument that supports MIDI input and has audio output. You'll need an audio interface with at least two available line level inputs and a way to interface the MIDI signal to the hardware instrument. I recommend just buying a USB to MIDI interface cable like this. This is one I got from Amazon for 17 US dollars, but there are other options. You can buy a dedicated MIDI interface or a MIDI patch bay interface, although these are getting harder and harder to find these days because people are primarily using software instruments these days. You can also just use your audio interface if it supports MIDI input. So some audio interfaces do support MIDI input and output. Now, if you do use your audio interface as a MIDI interface, you'll have to get some five pin DIN MIDI cables. Really, you only need one of these because we're not using the MIDI output for this setup, just the MIDI input. There are even some hardware instruments that support MIDI and even audio over a single USB cable. So double check and see what your device supports before buying anything, because some newer devices might just be a simple USB hookup with no other cables. So my signal flow looks like this. I have my USB to MIDI cable going from my Mac to the MIDI jacks on the Motif. With MIDI connectors, out goes to in and in goes to out, although I don't actually need to connect anything to the Motif output for this setup, but I'm gonna do it anyway. And then you need to connect the audio outputs of your instrument to line level inputs on your audio interface. So I'm just using two TRS cables for this. So we're sending the MIDI to the instrument and the instrument is returning audio back to my audio interface. There are many other ways to set up a MIDI studio, some that are way more 
complicated than this and allow you to have multiple instruments at once, but this is probably the simplest way to make this work. Okay, so now that I have the setup complete, let's jump into Logic. Okay, so now that I've explained the signal flow and setup, let me show you how to set this up in Logic. So first and foremost, let me just turn on my motif. I'm gonna turn the volume pretty high. Actually, I'm gonna turn it all the way up because the volume coming out of this uh, is pretty low with some of these patches. And while that's warming up, I have a piano break in the middle of this electronic track. Let me just play uh, what it sounds like right now. Um, this is just one of the stock Logic piano patches for right now. Okay, so I wanna swap this out with something that's maybe a little more electronic, and I'm gonna use the motif uh, rack for this. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to you know bypass any plugins that you don't wanna hear in the signal. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these annoying buses that Logic always creates. And I'm just gonna get rid of the sampler instrument that's on this track. So right now, uh, now this is just, you know, it's just MIDI, there's no instrument, so. Yeah, so we're not gonna hear anything on that track. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and solo that. And again, you'll hear nothing. So what you used to have to do way back in the day is you'd have to create an external uh, MIDI track. You don't have to do that anymore because you can actually load up a special plugin. Um, this is not an effects plugin. This is an instrument plugin. You click here and you scroll down and you go to utility. And this special plugin is called the external instrument plugin. Now you can set this up in mono or stereo. So uh, the output of the motif rack is stereo. So I'm gonna go with stereo. And then I'll just open up the external instrument plugin. And inside what you'll see is MIDI destination, MIDI channel, audio input, a volume a trim adjustment, a latency compensation. And then there's a section here where you can send program changes. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to MIDI destination and you're going to select your USB MIDI device. So this could be your audio interface if your audio interface supports MIDI in and out. This could be your uh, USB to MIDI cable like I'm using and that's what this is here. If I were to unplug that, uh, I would lose this option. Or if you're using some other type of MIDI interface, it will show up here. So I'm just gonna choose USB MIDI port one and what this is gonna do is it's gonna take this MIDI data and it's gonna spit it out that port into the motif. Um, for the MIDI channel, for most cases, you can just set this to all unless the patch you're working with is on a specific MIDI channel or you have like a really complex MIDI studio setup with multiple synthesizers. I do not have that, so I'm just gonna set this to all. And then the audio input is the, is the return path where the audio is gonna come back to your audio interface. So in my case, I have the output of the motif plugged into line inputs seven and eight on my audio interface. So I'm gonna select seven and eight here. I'm gonna make sure that the auto compensate latency option is turned on. I believe it'll automatically turn that on if you select an input here. Now what I need to do is on the motif, I need to decide what patch I'm going to use. So right now this is on a full concert grand patch. And if I just press play with this setup like this, I should get signal from the motif coming back into Logic. And then what you can do is you can use the audio input volume slider to compensate for the volume. So if you wanna add a little bit more uh, volume on input, you can certainly do that. Now on the motif, I can scroll through and I can choose different presets. So I'll just cycle through a few of these. Mm -hmm. 
So I have a few different uh, options here. Actually, there's tons of options on the motif rack, but again, this is not a, a tutorial on how to use the motif rack. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want to mess with the synth itself, if you'd prefer to uh, send program changes over to uh, presets on various programs that your instrument might have, uh, is you can use this section down here to send a program change to your instrument. Now, not all instruments are going to function the same. Some will have uh, different programs and different banks. On this one, I believe I only have programs because when I try to use the bank option, it just doesn't work. But if I switch my program back to zero and then click send program change, this will flip the patch back to the concert grand setting. And if you get like a ringing like that, like a, it, like it didn't receive a note off message, you can actually just uncheck and recheck the send program change button and that'll sort of uh, reset the MIDI notes. And if I go to program number one, you'll see it goes to the rock grand piano. If I go to number two, it goes to this mellow grand piano. And if I go way down the list, maybe I'll select something else here. 44 is a natural Wurlitzer. So you can use these program changes to switch the patch on your hardware devices. Okay, so I like uh, program eight, which is an old and squashed piano sound. Now, if you want to, you can actually just leave this as is, and you could just keep the instrument uh, in your mix and just work with it this way. As long as the instrument is turned on and the patch is loaded up, you can use it just like you would, you know, using external hardware for mixing. It's just that if you bounce your track, you're going to have to make sure that you do a real-time bounce, not an offline bounce. What I prefer to do is I prefer to print these things as audio so I can free up the unit for another patch. And there are units that have multiple outputs. There are units that have uh, multiple channels where you can actually you know, have multiple uh, patches uh, going on at the same time. Or maybe you just have multiple synthesizers or multiple uh, sampler or sample-based instruments like this all working in tandem to build out your arrangement. So there are certainly more complex ways to do this, but um, I prefer to just sort of render them down to audio or print them down to audio one at a time. So what I'm going to do now is create a audio track. And on this new audio track, I'm going to make this stereo. I'm going to set the input to a bus. So I'm going to use uh, bus 7 for this. I'll go back up to the instrument track. And I'm going to create a send off of this going to bus 7. I'm going to option click on that to set the... Uh, level to unity, and I'm also going to switch this over to be a pre-fader send, and the reason why I do that is um, this will take, uh, this will essentially ignore any volume changes you have here on the track itself, so you're recording a full level signal, because if you don't use pre-fader and you pull this down, you're going to record a really quiet signal on this track, or if you have this really up, uh, further up, you're going to get uh, a louder signal. Um, so again, bus 7, pre-fader, Unity going over to this audio track that's inputting bus seven. I'll rename this E Piano External. And I know someone will ask this, uh, can't you just set the input of the audio track to input seven and eight and record that way? You absolutely can. 
Um, what I think you miss by doing that, though, is you miss the audio input volume compensation, and you also miss the compensate latency. So if you do it that way, you may end up with latency issues and volume issues. So just be aware of that. So I, I just prefer printing the audio that's coming back into this track down to this other audio track. So now all I have to do at this point is just arm the track for recording. I'm gonna go ahead and mute it, otherwise I'm gonna hear two different uh, electric pianos at the same time, and I'll just hit R to record. For a lifetime. And there we go. So now I no longer even need the external MIDI instrument. I can bypass this send. I can mute and I can even hide the MIDI track because I don't really need it there anymore. And then now I have my electric piano printed as audio and I can repurpose the motif rack for another instrument if I like. And the only thing too is I can edit this. I can move it around in the arrangement. I can um, add effects to it. Maybe I want a little bit of EQ, maybe a bit more top end. Maybe I want a little uh, a little reverb or something. And you can certainly add these effects uh, on the instrument track um, because audio effects that are on the instrument track, those come after uh, the audio uh, return coming back into Logic. So you can certainly do that if you want. Okay, so that's how you can use external instruments and the external instrument plugin in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. This is also the final video in the MIDI portion of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. Starting in part 67, I'll be moving on to audio recording, audio editing, and other more advanced audio features of Logic Pro, so stay tuned for that. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.